Hello everyone, my name is James Coleman and I'm the Maxwell Render Mentor at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology. The Centre for Design Technology staff and students provide courses, equipment, consultancy and research in product design at the University of Brighton. Hello everyone, and today I'd like to cover something which uh, is sort of an introduction in a sense, but is mainly just a brief overview of Maxwell Render itself, and because mainly it's often very easy to forget why we use it in the first place and also I know a lot of people that this kind of software in general is absolutely brand new so basically you don't model with Maxwell Studio you don't animate with it it's only for rendering now it's compatible with loads of different uh, modeling software so that's where we get the um, the models from be it SolidWorks, Rhino or whatever those are the main two that we use but you can use plenty of others, Maya, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, you name it, it's probably compatible. And even if there isn't a dedicated plugin for it, as long as you can export to very, very common formats, STL, OBJ, whatever, then you'll be able to use those models inside Maxwell. And the, one of the main reasons we use it is because of the type of render engine it is. It's an unbiased render engine. What that means is that Maxwell will always, well, in theory, it should go and reach the correct um, final image whenever you render an image, instead of uh, you telling it sort of where to stop and telling it an approximation. And it's, I agree, it's sort of a hard concept to get your head around when you first start, but when you can start to use it, you should be all right. Okay, um, hopefully today I'll be able to show the effects of you know having an unbiased render engine and also the key uh, viewpoints of um, the very, very fundamentals of Maxwell Render itself in the uh, settings that you have available to you. So here we are, first of all, and what I'd like to do is um, just cover two basic aspects, time and sampling level, and these are found over on the left here in render options and then underneath scene and I want to get rid of everything else because otherwise it's going to be a little bit distracting so I'm going to close out uh, cameras and objects, materials, object parameters, environment and even camera parameters and in fact even the interactive preview. I'm going to turn it all off so I've just got my render options and my viewport and even in render options I'm going to close out output, just click on output and minimize it there materials, globals, channels, tone mapping, simulens, illumination and caustic. So all I'm left with is render options scene. And now I need something to actually render and to do that I'm going to go to file, library, scenes, Cornell v2 and then click on this and it'll ask you do you want to import it or open it. If I selected import it would bring whatever objects are in that scene uh, directly into my existing scene but open will completely replace whatever I've got open now so I want to open it. It's now telling me that uh, the scene that I'm working on now has been modified, I've done something to it, do I want to save it? No, it's fine. So here's the scene and uh, hopefully in a minute you'll uh, see what it looks like but the first thing I want to do is literally just to render this to kind of give you an idea of what we're going to cover today so I'm going to click big fat orange render button and it's saying that uh, there's an image which is going to be overwritten because of the uh, default path of the image file I'm going to say yeah I don't mind it brings up Maxwell Render it's a totally separate application uh, it's not Maxwell Studio it's totally separate and it just has this image which is the render which is now running rendering and uh, at the moment I haven't got the windows displayed if I press the H key on my keyboard it brings them back and I can see again this is all customizable but I, I don't worry and these are the settings render settings now a few things to note up the top are SL and uh, time left and these are the really, really fundamental settings in Maxwell. 
and at the moment SL, which stands for sampling level, is currently at 13. And the time left says 833 hours. Now that's not accurate. Well, it's not accurate in the sense that it's not true. It's not actually going to take 833. It is if we leave it at the current settings, but I'm not. So the first thing I want to do is close out this, or stop it first, and then just quit Maxwell, render itself, and go back to Maxwell Studio. Now the reason that render was taking so long is because of these settings over here. Time and sampling level. Maxwell will render an image and it will keep on going until it reaches one of these settings or one of these numbers. And it will stop at whatever one it reaches first. So let me show you what happens if I put time at 1. One minute. I'm going to leave sampling level at 50 and then render again. So here's the image and now it says time left is 57 seconds. It's literally just going to render this image for one minute and whatever I'm left with at the end is the image that I will have rendered. So that render's finished now and the SL that it's reached is 13.42 and it's gone for 59 seconds or a minute really but it has it rounds to the nearest second or whatever and it hasn't reached sampling level 50 which is what we set in the sampling level dialog box and the reason it hasn't reached it is because it's reached the time first but let's swap it round and quit out of Maxwell and sampling level and I'm going to set to 10 and then render it again Now time left says only well, 10, 14, <laughs> bounces around a bit. But it doesn't say a minute, and it's because it knows full well that it's not going to reach one minute before it reaches sampling level 10. And there it is, sampling level 10. So in other words, this is proof, or demonstrating rather, that it will only render to whatever sampling level you set, or whatever time you set, and it will render to whatever one it reaches first. The most common misconception about time and sampling level that I encounter in my training is that people think that even if you set sampling level to let's say 25 which is really really high for the most images that we make but you set time to say 10 minutes then even if it only renders for 10 minutes it will still reach sampling level 25 but it won't be as good right that's a misconception it will not reach sampling level 25 it will reach whatever it reaches in the 10 minutes that you've allowed it and you'll see that number up here now to demonstrate my normal sort of workflow for um images i'm going to put 9999 in the time and the reason being is that that's going to be you know 9,999 minutes? It's quite you know simple to put in on the keypad. Just bash nine a few times. You can put in just nine to nine if you really wanted. Um, but I think you know in terms of hours, there's a plausibility you could actually reach that. So I generally go for four, just because it's a little bit extra safer. And sampling level, um, not ten. Well, ten is about draft. But um, for these purposes, I'm just going to put in 1 because I want to see, or I want to demonstrate what SL1 actually looks like. And because uh, the image is quite a small resolution, what I'm going to do is reopen the camera parameters window and also the cameras window so I can select the camera. And then down under sensor, I can uh, pop the resolution up a bit. I'm going to change it to 1000. And then with time of none than a 9 and a sampling level of 1 I can render it again and this should reach it really really quickly, there we go uh, 2 seconds and I'm going to press H to hide the um, panels and again you can see the image is really really noisy however I promise you that uh, that's just a characteristic of unbiased render engines it will not be noisy once it's finished uh, again, this puts off a lot of people when they see this first time and they think, oh no, the image looks horrible, you know, it's not a good engine or whatever. It's meant to look like that. That's normally how all images look. And as it goes on, it will clean up. And as opposed to 
uh, and other you know or other types of render engines where you'll get a little cube or a, not sorry not a cube a square and it will kind of render a certain amount of pixels bit by bit as it goes along an unbiased render engine like Maxwell renders the whole thing but it looks noisy um, this is just a, a characteristic it's to do with the maths and physics of it but if I render this uh, same image now up to um, a higher sampling level one which I would normally use say 16 and then we'll see that it is, it is actually nice and clean by the time it's finished okay so here is the uh, finished render it's not quite to SL16 you can see up here it's actually SL14 and the image looks nice and clean a lot cleaner than it did at SL1 now the correct sampling level to actually render an image to or let a render reach is always subjective it always depends on whatever image you're looking at whatever the scene is the complications in the scene difficulties in the scene what I'd also like to demonstrate is the uh, exponential nature of sampling levels. They're not just a linear progression. Um, sampling levels are exponential in nature. These are two graphs which I made um, some time ago and it shows that the time necessary to reach um, increasing levels of sampling or whatever, however you want to describe it, um, it takes an exponential amount of time. So in other words um, for example, to get to uh, SL10, in this example was 311 seconds. Get to, to get to SL12 was a little bit more than double that. And what this means is that to get in, an increase of two in sampling levels will mean double the time uh, to render. So you'll need to wait just as long as you have already, in other words. So essentially, as you get to higher sampling levels, you have to wait for more time for the sampling levels to actually um, increase. Um, another misconception that I often encounter is that um, people think that you need to wait until um, a whole SL, if you like. So, you know, people will think, oh, it didn't reach SL 16, it only reached SL 15.7. That's fine, you know, it's still pretty near and it's not going to make a massive jump in quality at SL a whole SL like 16 um, it's very very incremental so even if it's only 15.7 15.9 it's not going to make a massive leap in quality at 16 it's still going to be going to be as gradual as it was before I hope this has been a reasonable introduction into time and sampling levels in Maxwell Render uh, these are the only two render settings which you would really need to worry about um, Due to its unbiased nature, Maxwell doesn't have any other uh, render settings to speak of. These are the main two uh, fundamental topics that you need to get your head around before you can properly use it. Thanks very much guys and I'll see you again soon. For more information about Maxwell Render training at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology, email maxwellrenderbrightoncdt at gmail.com.